Hi everyone, I think we'll just get started as we're waiting for people to log in. So I'm Alex, I'm from the Leaders of our team. Uh, welcome to our online engineering to today featuring uh, Rob Fowler. Uh, just before we, before we get to Rob, I'll run through what's going to happen during the session. Uh, as there are lots of people watching this event, uh, we've muted everybody except for myself and Rob uh, for the whole event, just for so there's no interruptions or distractions at all. Uh, the first part of the event will be Rob's presentation, which will then be followed by the second part, which is the Q&A section. Uh, please feel Feel free to type in your questions at any point during the session. Uh, use the Q&A facility to do this or the chat section in Zoom. If you're on Facebook, you can use the comment section to type in your questions. I will then relay the questions to Rob to answer those. Uh, I'm just going to explain a little bit about what the leaders want. If you're an engineer, what would you do competition and tell you what it's all about? Uh, its main aim is to inspire young people ages 3 to 19 to look at the world around them and design solutions to problems. This can be a problem as small as, say, getting out of bed in the morning, brushing your teeth, or even a worldwide experience um, that we're experiencing right now. Uh, we provide opportunities for you to meet and interview engineering professionals online, just like we're doing today, to inspire you to think of ideas and start designing some of your own inventions as well. Um, without further ado, I'm now going to pass you over to Rob. Hi, Rob. Hi, Alex. How are you? Fantastic. Uh, brilliant. Thank you. Are you all right? Yeah, not too bad. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen, Rob. And I think that should allow you in a second to do that as well. I've just made you uh, co-host. So I think you should be able to share your screen cool. as well. I'm just going to start your video if that's all right as well. Yeah. Can well, you see that? Start. Does that work? Yeah, it's just come up now. That's brilliant. Excellent. Okay. So, um, Good morning, everybody. Just uh, thought to start just by talking a little bit about myself, but sort of five or seven, ten minutes of, of presentation slides. I've only got a couple of those. Um, oh, excuse me, there we go. So um, actually, my, my background is slightly different. Um, I, I almost didn't go to university going back many years. I, I then um, made a late decision to go to university and went on to do uh, an undergraduate in economics. And so I, I went to the University of Hull, but I spent a, a year out working in industry, working in, in London as a commercial and residential property economist. When I left university um, around 2008, I was um, hunting around looking for, a, looking for a role in the middle of recession. So I joined um, an organization called DPD, who most people will know as a parcel delivery company. Uh, and I spent 10 years at DPD working in a variety of different roles, um, working around the business, um, but the predominant time was spent uh, working in their property department, so building very, very, very large warehouses. Um, and then I did a, a postgraduate in real estate at that point. The last three years at, at DPD, I spent building out their electric vehicle program. So anything that affected city centres, anything that affected electric vehicles, basically was, was my responsibility to do and deliver. So um, DPD has a very strong EV program, electric vehicle program. It has around 600 electric vehicles on its fleet now. It's got one of the biggest fleets uh, in the UK. Um, just thinking about actually the challenges of Volta trucks really, and actually when you, you look at the, the engineer questions which have just been asked, actually the interesting point is really Volta trucks was solved uh, was put together or formed to solve solve challenges and, and problems that we see. And actually, what we're seeing in the world is is more and more people using e-commerce, more and more people buying online and having deliveries made to their houses and to their offices. And um, and actually, that's making a really significant challenge for both society as a whole, but also logistics companies as well. And really, Volta Truck set out to solve solve four four key challenges as we saw it. Actually, all of the transport and all of the movements of goods and freight, and which makes all of our houses work and our cities and our schools work, um, all of those vehicles have impact on the air. They have emissions, uh, and those emissions are starting to impact on people's health now. So actually, one of the founding principles of, of Volta Trucks was actually about making sure that um, transport could be zero emission at tailpipe, making sure that we weren't putting out pollution into the environment. And actually what we're seeing in the data and statistics now is that air quality is starting to affect people's lives and people's health long term. We see a real challenge in, in a driver shortage in the logistics industry. Um, a lot of people, the average age of a driver is considerably higher or, or is quite high. And that means that actually there's not a lot of entrants coming into this marketplace. And um, although more and more people want to be involved in logistics or want to use logistics as a service, fewer people actually driving vehicles. 
The next bit that became really challenging is, well, actually buying an electric vehicle is straightforward, but actually how do you make your business work with an electric vehicle? How do you charge your electric vehicle? How do you um, train your drivers differently? How does it need to be maintained differently? And actually part of our mission is to help customers like that understand and support them as they go through uh, electrification and they start to, start to electrify their commercial vehicles. And then finally, safety. Actually, heavy goods vehicles and lorries and trucks inside city centres, um, they're involved in a significant, significantly high number of fatalities involving pedestrians and cyclists. And actually, if you look at the way a truck is designed, it hasn't really changed in the last 30 or 40 years. So actually, we wanted to look at the way the vehicle was built and the way the vehicle was constructed and designed to see if we could make it as safe as we possibly could do. So this is, this is our Volta Zero truck. This is a 16 ton large heavy goods vehicle, which is designed um, for urban distribution and city centers. So where the air quality is worse and the congestion is worse, that's where we want to put the vehicles into because these big vehicles can carry the same amount of goods as one, two or three, probably three small vehicles. It's a completely electric vehicle. It's zero emission, it's powered exclusively by battery. And you can see that what we've been able to do is to change where the driver sits. So I'm sure you can see the driver sits in the middle and he sits much lower down and that allows the driver to look around the vehicle better, to have much better visibility. And really the Volta Zero was designed to solve those problems. We wanted to make it feel like driving a high-end car or an expensive car, like uh, rather than necessarily driving a, a truck or a heavy goods vehicle. We wanted to make the driver's life easier. So they step in and out at a much lower height into the vehicle. And we wanted to make it safer. So you can see all the glass around the driver, the visibility is very good. And they're at about the same eye level as, as an adult at this point. So really our whole objective became around fixing those four big problems that we saw. These vehicles are designed for going in and out of cities. And really they're designed to hold up to about 16 pallets of goods, which is considerably uh, more than the majority of of vehicles in this space because we can put two products side by side in the back. Um, they can go around 150 to 200 kilometers, so around 100 miles on average, um, which is more than enough for a city center distribution. And if you look at who we want to sell these vehicles to, we're looking at businesses who deliver to other businesses, whether that's food or supermarkets um, or the shops which we go to as well as delivering to people who live in city centres, whether that's their furnitures or their TV or their kitchens or whatever else it might be. So really, this is a founding principle. And the, truck, the, the first of our trucks will be launched in about six weeks from now. So you get a feel for actually how quickly we've gone. Um, and actually, we're really looking forward to launching this and seeing the Volta Zero out on the road. OK, so that was my very whistle-stop presentation. Um, there you go, Alex. Hi Rob, thank you very much uh, for your presentation there. That was that was brilliant and a really good insight into what you do there at Volta. Um, I'll just reiterate what you just said. If you've got any questions for those who are listening, uh, please type them into the chat section or the Q and A facility at the bottom as well. I've just got a question, Rob, if that's okay um, to start off with. Um, I know you said um, you're hoping soon for the trucks to be. Uh, distributing and going, going on the roads. Um, is that going to be obviously an exciting and proud moment for you? Oh, massively. I mean, the whole the whole company has has worked very hard to get these vehicles on the road. Our first vehicle will be out and about in about six weeks now. And then we have about 12 to 20 vehicles going onto the road in the first half of next year with different customers who are going to take these vehicles out and give us information on how they perform and how those vehicles operate. But it's a huge moment for the company. And we're both very proud of the fact we've achieved it, but we've also achieved it in a very quick time scale as well, which is something which we're very proud of. And did um, how how did you start off in engineering and, and, and getting into into the industry, Rob? So so I suppose I'm a bit different for really somebody who leads an engineering company. Obviously, my background is is slightly different. I I come from more of a logistics industry, but I think looking at the way that our engineers entered the industry that they're in now, um, they came through um, either sort of post uh, undergraduate qualifications or they went out and sort of did this apprenticeship type roles uh, or they joined organizations and developed through the organization. So 
I know there's lots of good apprenticeships in this sector from my, even DPD have some great apprenticeships as well. So that's the, the most common entrant route that I see for people which I'm interviewing for jobs in our business. I know you said um, you're launching in the next kind of six weeks. Have you then got plans after that for the future already? Or are you just kind of focusing on that, that launch in six weeks? Yeah, so, so the launch is... Um, the launch is around six weeks from now. That will be our first vehicle going out. And then we have the, around 12, somewhere between 12 and 20 trucks going on the road for the first half of next year. And from there, we, we're looking to then produce around 500 trucks a year afterwards. So we have, um, we have a, a good growth plan over the course of the next four or five years. And I think what's been really interesting is that we're seeing lots of, lots of our customers really demanding these vehicles from us. And that's been really, really good for us. I know you were talking about the, the, the kind of design process and, and going through what you kind of put into the, the Volta Zero that you discussed then as well. Uh, you're obviously talking about the kind of the glass and where the, the driver sits. Um, is this kind of all designed by you? Do you have your, obviously your team around you as well? Do you use kind of designs on paper and things like that as well? Yeah, so we have a, a specialist design agency who helps us design the vehicle to meet the, the requirements that we have around safety. A very talented team called Astimer, who are or from a company called Astimer, who are based in Warwick. And it started off as sketches and then it moved to uh, CAD models and 3D models. And that's really how the vehicle was, was brought forward. But the key point for us was to, to really look at the principles of a truck and say, well, why is it like that? Why, why is why is it always been that the driver sits so high in the air? And why is it always been that the engine's at the front? And, and they're the types of um, questions we as a business asked ourselves, which allowed us to think about how you put the, the vehicle into this sector and address some of those challenges that we see. Have you been inspired by kind of any other vehicles at all? Or um, what's kind of your, your favourite mode of transport, do you think, Rob? Well, I think I like my bike, but um, but I don't think that's a particularly good way of delivering lots and lots of pallets into city centres. I think um, for me, what's been really inspiring is the option to go back and 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 think about think about design from scratch, right? To to not just say I'm going to build something the same way that I did it previously or the same way as everybody else did it. The really interesting bit for me was just to to have that opportunity to to start with a blank piece of paper and to rethink that whole design piece. So I've just realised my uh, my camera wasn't on then, so you can right. see me as well. So you're not just talk, talking to a, a blank screen there, uh, Rob. Um, so as you were going up as well, um, we just asked, were you always kind of creating things as you were going up? Were you building things, uh, maybe going through school as well? I, I, w I would have loved to have been more creative than I was. Um, I'm not, a, as I say, I'm not an out-and-out -out engineer. Um, but actually one of the great things that I find about being involved with the engineering the engineering teams is, the ability just to challenge and think about everything really there's nothing off the table and actually by being new coming into this it's a great opportunity for me to to really ask some fundamental questions and some questions that are underpinning the work we're doing because my level of understanding isn't as good as an engineer but i can still look at things and say well why is it like that and why why have we done that why do we think that's the best way to do that and that's been a great process for me to be involved with talking to people and, and just asking some of those simple questions that I think the lesson probably for me and, and probably for everybody is that just because something has been done one way for a long time doesn't mean it has to be done like that forever. And really it's going back to challenging what people are doing to find, try and find a better way to do things. Has, has it been kind of challenging you working from home at the moment um, for, for kind of your company? Obviously you said you, you're launching soon anyway. Um, so I hope it's not put too much of a dent in that as well. No, it, it's been enormously challenging but i think people have adjusted well uh, i was very used to traveling once a week quite frequently across europe um, and i have done for a number of years or traveled around the uk for a number of years all of a sudden to go to um i've been at home for probably four months now which has been um slightly strange i think it's probably fair to say but actually, I think everybody has adjusted well. Uh, you know, our business has continued to recruit people and we've continued to add jobs in. So we, we've been positive throughout this. Um, it's a challenging time for people, of course it is. But actually, what I think we're seeing is that that importance of logistics. I think everybody thinks back to not being able to buy any toilet rolls at the start of this pandemic. And you suddenly realise just how important the logistics industry is. And I think 
when you start to look at it, you know, everything you eat, everything you sit on, everything you touch has been supplied by somebody in the logistics drive chain, whether that's delivering it to a shop or delivering it to your front door. It really is a, a colossally important industry to the way that the UK works. We've got a good question kind of touch on that as well. Have, have you come across any challenges throughout the years um, with this company? Yeah, I think, um, to be honest, taking over a startup, a small company in um, in February and then having a the probably, well, the only pandemic I've lived through or, or the worst pandemic I've lived through was, is undoubtedly challenging and that's been really tough. I think actually what was really hard is making sure that all the team members are working together and it's not necessarily people not doing their work. It's But when you go to an office with people, you're used to talking about what their children are doing and where they're going on holiday and taking some time to build those personal relationships. And actually, that's been probably the most difficult bit is making sure you make time as a group of people to, to bond as a team. And I think bringing new people into a business. So when I joined in February, I was the third employee. I think we've got about 16 or 17 or just advertised for our 17th employee five months later. And what I kind of look at it and realize is that bringing new people into a business is really difficult. And it's difficult when you can sit down next to them and spend two days bringing them up to speed, but it's even harder when you're trying to do it via video call. Uh, and that has been really challenging. And I think that's been challenging for a lot of people in my experience that I'm talking to. Yeah, I think that's that's really important. And like you said there, um, it's, I think it's been tough for quite a lot, of, but like you said, you, you're managing to, to launch in six weeks as well, which is obviously um, kudos to you for, for do, being able to do that during this crisis crisis as well. Um, so obviously have, you've been working at home now. Uh, how have you, fi- have you found it, um, I won't say easy, but have you enjoyed parts of it as well? Yeah, I think so. I think um, it's, it's interesting working from home permanently when you've got I got young children and so I got children around who who want to come and talk to me and ask me questions and quite regularly decide they want to come on video calls with me, which is always fun. So they come and come and sit in. I think um, actually what I think was really interesting is that a lot of people have always thought working from home was a viable solution or was a, a, an option for companies and everybody was a bit uncertain about it and whether or not it was the right thing to do. But I think this period has shown that actually organisations can have a much more working from home culture. And I think it's better for people's work-life balance. I think for people managing people, it's important that you have to be able to trust your people to know that they're doing the right things with their time. And if they want to take half an hour to go to the shops in the afternoon, well, that's just what happens. And you just have to get your head around that's the way that people work. But I think it, it's made us certainly think very carefully about whether or not having an office with 60 or 70 people in in the future is the right thing to do. What, what's kind of the most interesting part of the experience you think so far? Or kind of like the biggest thing that you've worked on so far, do you think, Rob? I think for me, um, clearly seeing a product being built has been fascinating. And to see it go into the engineering locations and to see people building things is, is brilliant. I think what I found fascinating, given my background in, in more logistics, is I have customers from a range of different sectors and sizes. And... I've been given the opportunity to go into them and have a look at how their business works and and understand how they operate and and look at their approaches and and see how our vehicle can make their lives better and make their businesses better, but ultimately make the planet better, which I think is most important. So to be able to kind of look at other businesses and get an experience for them has been fascinating. I think the concept of making things, so I've been involved with with building smaller vehicles before with a a company near Banbury or near Newbury. um, near Oxford, sorry, excuse me. And it, it's great to, to see something going from an idea on a piece of paper to seeing the prototype, to being able to ride the prototype. I managed to break the first one. You know, that process has all been great to see it get all the way to a production. And that's something which I find really interesting, actually seeing things being put together and built out. Have you been able to do any kind of test driving at all, um, Rob, so far? Or is, is it at that stage yet that you can, that you can test drive them? Not, not yet. We're very close. Mm. Very so, close. Are you, are you going to be involved with that at all? Will you well, get to do that? I actually don't have the right driving license, believe it or not. So, uh, so one of the things I do need to do is get the right driving license. But I'm looking forward to getting into the cab and to really experiencing what it's like to sit in that different position and to understand how that's going to impact on the driver and the way that they drive the vehicle. So, do, do you have do you have like a specialist track to do that at all? 
uh, where yes. you work? So we have a we have an off road a private road facility which is on an old an old airfield. So we um, we can drive up and down the runway and all the roads around it, and um, and that allows us to drive the vehicle and to test it in a in a safe and controlled environment. That just reminds me of something like Top Gear, where they've got kind of the the airstrip, the track that they use as yeah, well. I, I don't think we go quite as fast as them, <laughs> but it's the same. It's the same idea, yeah. So, but actually, that's really useful for us because we can take people there. You can get an experience of driving that vehicle mm. without having to having to go out on the roads and and to put people at risk. So it's a really brilliant brilliant location for us to actually sh- to take people to and to let them get that experience of driving the vehicle. Yeah, obviously, because they'll be in a different position. Um, than they used to want they as well so they'll kind of need will you do kind of practice sessions with the drivers then yeah so it's our intention to help all of our customers train their drivers on the vehicle in general around how it operates because for example um, we are using camera wing mirrors now rather than a traditional piece of glass so we're starting to change some of those inputs inside the vehicle we're a lot more um, digital based it's more um, HMI or, or sort of almost like iPad screens inside the vehicle so we're changing the way that the vehicle design is so we'll be working with drivers to make sure they can drive those vehicles safely as well and with kind of the ethos of these vehicles as well is is kind of re- renewable energy um, always been kind of important to you yeah I think so I did a lot of work on on renewable energies and, and on-site storage and, and various different kind of solutions in this space we see it as a really important piece, whether it's purchasing through renewable energy, whether or not it's generating your own electricity on site. Um, clearly, the UK is doing a great job at the moment of cleaning up its supply chain of electric or cleaning up the electrical supply or electricity supply. I'm trying to think of the right way to phrase it. But actually, we see regularly see statistics on that shift towards renewable energy, actually removing fossil fuels. And actually, that gives us a much better, a much better life cycle of our vehicles. And one of the other things that we've done as a business is we've built into our vehicles some renewable, uh, some sustainable materials. So actually materials which start off in a field and then they're built into panels and then they can ultimately be recycled come the end of it. So actually we're starting to think more and more about the whole life of a vehicle. And it'll be kind of updating those vehicles a bit um, as you go along throughout the career, uh, throughout the years as well um, with that. Uh, just touching on kind of something that you've mentioned before about working in a team. Is this is this something you find really important within your business and, well, to be honest, outside your business as well or throughout different ones? Yeah, huge. I think the, the great thing about the, the role that I have is that I get to work with people who are experts in their own fields. And you have to understand that they are the experts uh, and I'm – sticking my nose in as their manage in their, in a manager's position. But actually, the team is everything. You can have the best idea in the world and you can have the most money in the world, but you still need a team to actually deliver this. And, um, and recruiting the best team is the most important part of my job, in my opinion, and giving them the best opportunity to go out and do what they do best and to succeed. Because really, they are the cornerstone of this business. I mean, they're the cornerstone of all businesses. And I think everybody... Everyone has their own expertise and everybody likes to be talked with differently and to be to have different levels of, of engagement with me. And I think I have to one of my things which I've had to learn is to sort of adjust flexibly to working with lots of different people. And do you know of any kind of specialist materials that you've used for the trucks or anything that's gone into the into the trucks that are different than what you've worked with before? Yeah, so some of the composite materials we're using are um are perhaps non-standard uh, might be the best way to put this. Um, and dipped in our low volume where you can watch them being hand manufactured is very, very interesting in the way that the fabric is woven and, and resined and, and, uh, and baked to get the strength that you need out of it. And that's been really interesting to see that deployment. Um, it's not dissimilar to, to some other very large vehicle manufacturers who are starting to move into composite panelling materials really. I'm really starting to challenge again the way that vehicles, the general perception of the way vehicles are constructed. And obviously these, these panels are being put into um, almost like non, where, where impact wouldn't damage humans as such or the driver um, in certain parts of the vehicles. But really that's been fascinating to see the way that those panels are put together and weaved together and then the resin and, and everything is applied to that. So that's been a really good, good, interesting process to go through. I think we've got quite a good question as we're kind of winding down here. Um, the last one here we've got is, is are there any kind of tips or advice or something that you've learned maybe along the way that you could tell for those 
young engineers or those who wanted to start a business up um, that are listening today? Yeah, I think um, it's a very good question, Matt. Is. Um, what would I say to myself? I think if you can find something that you want to work in, that you're interested in, I think you will find that your general level of, of satisfaction, um, your general happiness will be greater. I think the other thing which, which probably has been a reflection of how of where I've, I've ended up is um, there's there, in certain places you can do there's just a, a route to be what people would consider to be successful like to get further up up in a company but you should also be very open-minded to opportunities and you should look at your own ability and your own skill set and you should work out perhaps what you need to develop or what you could do better and then you should seek opportunities to do that and that's really been my approach is actually you know sometimes I've taken jobs on which may have been a sideward step but it's because I needed more experience of doing something and that makes you a more complete individual in my opinion. So that would be my point is if you can work, if you can work in a field that you genuinely enjoy, that's, that's a, a fantastic thing to get that satisfaction out of your work. And I would not necessarily think that there's only one way to, to progress for an organization. You should take a view on gaining the experience and working in lots of different fields. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, that's some great advice there, Rob. And just want to say a big thank you to you for taking time out your day uh, exactly. to do this for us today. I hope you've enjoyed um, yeah, answering those great. questions. Yeah, Fantast fantastic. Fantastic. Um, uh, thank you to everyone who's been listening as well and sending in those questions. I've just put in a, an online survey in the chat section if you want to complete that for uh, participants. Um, I hope you've all been inspired to take on the Leaders War competition as well and start designing some of your own inventions and use our resources on our website leadersaward.com to help you and please join us for our upcoming interviews uh, for the rest of the week as well. Um, I think we'll end it there. Uh, bye Rob, bye everyone. Thanks everyone.